Bigger Nikki, or better known as Riga, is a track in a little country called Latvia in Eastern Europe, but is one of the most known drifting circuits in all of Europe. Fast corners, super fast transitions, full commitment, lots of chances to crash and break your car into a million pieces. This track really does have it all and is one of the most difficult tracks, not only in the world, but also in the virtual world. So for all my friends struggling on Riga or Bigger Nikki, let's have a full breakdown on how to master the difficult Eastern European course. And before we get started, send this to a friend who either slams into the last outer zone or goes super wide on corner one every single time. All right, so first things first, we're gonna take this into a little drone cam and have a bit of a breakdown of the track. And this version of the track is the Virtual Drift Championship Bikernicki 2022 edition. I'm gonna leave a nice little link down in the description just so you guys can download the track if you don't already have it. So first up, we have the cones. Don't hit the cones because it's Seto Corsa and if you hit them, you'll go flying into the air. Coming up into this first corner to initiate, there are three ways to initiate. So step one is going about mid-track and having a weight transfer and not pulling any handbrake and just all foot brake. This initiation does work. However, you can one, over-center the car, or two, have a really inconsistent entry. So more than likely, you're gonna go off. And once you go off here, especially, you're not gonna get back on. You're gonna start sliding out and you're gonna slam into this wall and your day is gonna end. Or you're gonna be too shadow or you're gonna to be too shallow and go into the drop zone and you're gonna drop a tire and you're not gonna have a good time. The weight transfer only initiation is not something I would do. Step number two is the just straight line handbrake initiation. Now, you get this rather consistent, however, it's quite boring. The reason being is, well, it's just a straight line initiation with a handbrake pull. And sometimes you do go a little shallow because you scrub off a little bit too much speed. That is not my favorite initiation. My favorite initiation is the weight transfer plus handbrake pull. So what this does is it's a weight transfer. So one, you get some nice style and you can carry a lot of momentum and you just have a really quick handbrake pull at about the one cone or the yellow line just to reset the car, get back on throttle, light off the tires and go about your day through this outer zone. And throughout this entire zone, even though the clip is over there, you wanna have your rear tires on this yellow line throughout the entire zone. So, so being fully committed on the throttle and a little bit of left foot brake will do that for you, getting through this zone. This transition point is extremely difficult because one, the track narrows up and it's extremely narrow. And two, you have this very awkward outer zone here and this straight is rather long. So to get through it, you need to do some finessing with your car. So here's what I do. So here's what I do. I'd keep extending the corner out through this yellow line till about here, till you hit this exposed guardrail section, and I'm going to start slowly rolling over the car. What this means is it's the exact opposite of a fast transition. What you're doing is, is you're slowly rotating the car to carry as much momentum as possible. It may not seem stylish, but especially on this track, it'll look stylish just because of how the track narrows up, and you'll be able to carry a consistent amount of angle through this outer zone and into this inner clip. So slow roll into this outer zone, not super fast transition and keep your tires and keep your tires off of this rumble strip because your car will do the Cupid shuffle if you hop onto the rumble strip. And so carrying through here, not being on the rumble strip, you're gonna get into this first inner clip. Again, you should not hop onto this rumble strip, one, because you're off track and two, your car will start to nay nay across the track. So you wanna be right where the blinker is or this yellow hash mark. You don't wanna be anywhere too far out here because you're not gonna be able to extend this corner very well. So once you get through that inner clip, you wanna extend out to this third outer zone. And once again, you do not wanna hit the rumble strips because your car will milli rock its way into the grass or somewhere off the track. You wanna keep your tires on this white line. This is a very weird transition again. Why? Because the track is again narrow. You get into this zone about here, right? So you're riding the white line out, you keep riding it and you're gonna go out a little bit and you're gonna stay pretty far track right and you're gonna transition. What this is gonna do is just gonna push your car across the track and once you hit this 
dotted white line about here in this grid place, you're going to hit the yellow line. And that's good because you want to ride this yellow line before the outer zone. So you're going to keep your car's left rear tire on this yellow line throughout. And then you're going to hit this outer zone. And it's super easy to put a tire on the rumble strip. But once again, you don't want to get on there because you're going to do the cha-cha slide if you get onto this rumble strip. You want to be a little bit away from it just to make sure you don't hit it but what a pro would do is ride their tires along this side of the rumble strip so you're not on top of it but you're still in the box and you're a little outside which will grant you some great style points and from there you're going to get out of that outer zone and you're going to transition about mid-track a little before that white line on the ground and you're going to have a nice handbrake pull and here this wall is deadly now let me show you why. So as you can see, the wall isn't perfectly circular. There's kinks out in places. It's pretty flat in some places, especially at the end and towards the beginning. So it's super, super easy to slam into it. So what you want to do after you transition and you get to the wall is you want to be pretty far outside. From here, after that, I like to have left foot braking, one, to you know stabilize the car, and then two, not go full throttle around this corner because more than likely your car isn't set up super super well and isn't set up just for this wall to stay at I guess a consistent angle and then randomly pull out of angle and pull forward towards the end so more than likely if you stay full throttle you're going to be good until you see these tire barriers and then you're going to slam into the wall because the wall becomes very flat so what you're going to do is you're going to use your throttle pedal and your brake pedal to your advantage. So you're going to be not really feathering the throttle, but, you know, manipulating the throttle. No, you're going to be feathering the throttle. OK, you're going to be feathering the throttle, still being pretty committed, but lifting off and on going from about 80 percent throttle to 100 percent throttle just to make sure you don't slam into the wall and using the left foot brake as well to help you. But you should still maintain and then carry momentum throughout the end. And that is is the run and if you're in competition you're probably going to get either a 62 or a 95 because this track is so so difficult now let's have a quick solo run and a very fast breakdown of the solo run So let's break down Bicker Nikki. So you go through the cones and then you want to move mid track. And here you want to have a nice weight transfer initiation. But after you transfer the weight, you want to have a quick e brake pull to reset the car. And after that, a little bit of left foot braking and full throttle will carry you well through outer zone one and two. And here you want to have full throttle transition just to make sure you can arc yourself well and carry as much momentum through inner clip one and into outer zone three. And here, once again, you want to transition far right into outer zone four and you wanna be outside prior to that zone. And here, a very quick transition with the e-brake getting nice along that wall, full throttle. And you can feather the throttle a little bit here just to make sure your car is stable and running nice and wide on this final outside zone. And that, my friends, is how you drift VDC Bicker Nikki. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to like and subscribe. And if you have any Riga tips, make sure to leave them down in the comments below. And if you think this video was helpful, send it to a friend who sucks at this track. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And I'll see you guys next week for some more sim racing content.